Hello. I'd like to finish off my Jehovah's Witness Robot series by giving you some tips on how to evangelize Jehovah's Witnesses. Most of this advice is simple ampersand effective. However, unfortunately, I'm going to have to conclude with some very unsavory truths, namely that here in the United Kingdom, few evangelical church leaders today seem to know what the gospel is, or can define the Trinity. So that repeatedly, I have come across anti-Trinitarian doctrine, ampersand other similar errors within evangelical churches. Many evangelicals in the UK know or even care what they believe. The result is that our churches now teach experiential postmodern mysticism, which is about as blasphemous as that of the Jehovah's Witness heresies. However, just like the Watchtower leaders, our own evangelical leaders prefer to criticize other religions, rather than face up to the sad fact that our evangelical faith is really no more biblically based than some of the cults. My first tip is learn to listen. Good evangelism is not a case of simply talking non-stop, as many ask him. Listen to the person you are talking to. Take notes on paper. If you develop the ability to listen well, then when it's your turn to speak, he or she will listen to you out of deference to your politeness towards him. If on the other hand you just talk non-stop and are insulting, then the Jehovah's Witness will try to talk over you and you'll end up shouting at each other. Learn to speak slowly and quietly. If you have an important point to make, then you can make it more effectively by speaking quietly, so that you force your Jehovah's Witness to listen to you. However, if you shout at him, then he will simply shout back at you, and for cent neither of you will listen to what the other is saying. Secondly, Try not to tell your Jehovah's Witness that he or she is wrong. Rather ask questions which enable them to discover this for themselves. For instance if they should claim that Jesus died upon a stake with one single nail through both hands, then don't give them a grammar lesson on the plural noun, nails. At John 20:25, 20, instead ask them to read this verse several times and ask multiple questions such as, what is a noun? If they don't know then find out by using a dictionary. What is a plural? How does a plural differ from a singular? Is nails a plural or a singular noun? Is hands a plural or a singular noun? Make it simple and develop the habit of asking them many questions and not telling them they are wrong. Let them discover what the Bible says for themselves. Thirdly, use their language when you can use it without compromising the gospel. So if you refer to God as either Jehovah or as Yahweh, then they will absolutely love you for so doing. This will make them extremely keen to continue to speak with you. Fourthly, Jehovah's Witnesses have been brainwashed to respond to certain terminology by walking away and ending any book study. They utterly despise the words Trinity born again, saved, ampersand cross. Therefore, avoid these terms. So rather than talk about God being a trinity, I'd suggest that you call God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And rather than refer to the cross, say that he died upon a tree as 1 Peter 2.24 states. Rather than talk about your being, born again or saved, talk about your having complied with Jehovah's or Yahweh's arrangement for salvation. Also you are on far stronger footing if you stick to scriptural terms. If you say that God is a trinity then a Jehovah's Witness will simply ask you to show which verse states that. But no verse says trinity. However, if you refer to God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, then by sticking to the scriptural language, your Jehovah's Witness will have to argue against the plain words of scripture. Fifthly, always try to put your message in the context of obeying Jehovah God, by which you now mean God the Father in this particular context, rather than Father and Person Son and Holy Spirit. So if you're discussing Jesus being worshipped, then don't give them a complicated grammar lesson on the Greek text, where it states that we must worship Jesus. Simply say something like this. My Jehovah's Witness friend, 
I worship Jesus because I want to obey Jehovah God. I love Jehovah. At Hebrews 1, 6, Jehovah commands the angels to worship Jesus, and all that I want to do is Jehovah's will. I cannot be wrong can I, for wanting to obey Jehovah God, and for saying do his will? If a Jehovah's Witness should argue against you, then be silent for a while and then whisper the question. But why are you telling me not to obey Jehovah God? I want to do Jehovah's will, because I love him. Sixthly, you must occasionally ask your Jehovah's Witness a question about some of their older books which the Watchtower no longer publishes. Show them a photocopy, and ask them to explain how that doctrine or date for Armageddon is no longer believed. The purpose in doing this, is to shake his or her idolatrous faith. The primary focus of the Jehovah's Witness faith, is not Jehovah. Even though they use his name, neither is their faith based upon the Bible, or Jesus Christ. Their faith is idolatrous, and presented is based entirely upon the Watchtower Society. There are numerous sites online, run by former Jehovah's Witnesses, where you can download scans. It is absolutely vital that you do this, but it must be done gradually, and present gently. Never give them too much information, too quickly. Seventhly, try to make only two or three points each time you meet with a Jehovah's Witness. Don't try to cover a large number of scriptures or topics. If you hand a Jehovah's Witness a written response to say a chapter in one of their books, then try to keep your notes to a single page. Never swamp your Jehovah's Witness with endless photocopies, print-offs and other materials. Your methodology must be gradual, over a period of many months. Eighthly, If you have any literature written against the Watchtower then keep it hidden from them when they come to call. Never refer to it and any scans or photocopies which you give them must be just that. A plain scan. Without any references to any website, Christian book or any literature, other than that published by the Watchtower Society. Jehovah's Witness are told to immediately break off studies with people who have access to books and literature, written against the Watchtower Society. Ninthly, God saves us. We can't make people saved. So pray for your Jehovah's Witness, and for some don't feel that you have failed if you don't see them repent and believe the Gospel. Often Jehovah's Witness evangelism is a relay race, where one Christian after another trips away over a period of many years. This is especially true for married Jehovah's Witnesses. If a Jehovah's Witness man comes to Christ, he might have to stay in the Watchtower Society for several years for the sake of his wife and children. He will try to witness to them, so that they can all leave together. Now you must respect this. You cannot act like a bull in a china shop, and expect your new convert to immediately leave the Watchtower, leaving his family still in this cult. Amberson causing a divorce. Penfly. If you wish to point out some error in the watchtower, then learn to do so indirectly. For instance, if you were to tell the Jehovah's Witness that their first president was almost certainly a Freemason, and you show them photocopied evidence, then they would probably just argue with you. So what I do is show them the evidence in the form of a photocopy. I then make no comment, but then show them similar photocopied evidence in another cult such as the Mormons, of a similar Masonic connection. The Jehovah's Witness will readily admit that the early Mormon leaders were Masons. But you don't need to make the same claim for the Jehovah's Witness leaders, as they will usually make the connection themselves. 11. Jehovah's Witness are taught that anyone who argues against their religion is demonized. So tell them now and again that you are not demonized. When they ask you how do you know that, simply say something like, as you don't follow any pope, vicar, pastor or creed, because you just want to obey Jehovah's word, just as the Bible says it, that is why you know that you are not demonized. Because people who love Jehovah and try to obey his word, and do his will, 
are not demonized. If the discussion is getting heated, then sometimes saying this can be extremely effective. Wealth. Try to keep away from the more common texts, such as John 1, 1, which Christians raise with Jehovah's Witness. Because if you raise them, then the Jehovah's Witness will have endless prepared arguments. Instead, try to approach the subject from a fresh angle which the Jehovah's Witness will not have prepared for. For instance, rather than go to the usual proof text to prove the Trinity, why not attempt to define what blasphemy is, ampersand by so doing, as an unexpected consequence to the Jehovah's Witness, you will come to the conclusion that the one God Yahweh is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Another approach is to focus upon having your sins forgiven only by going to the Son. This approach also works on Apostolics, Unitarians and Christadelphians. Focus upon verses such as John 3 36, 6 38 to 40, 8 24, and percent 1 John 5 10 to 13. Finally, Jesus Christ is truth. John 14 6. It is therefore disgraceful to see so many ignorant and uneducated people in positions of leadership today, within the evangelical church, who are doctrinally clueless. Christian television stations regularly blaspheme God. Amperson preach a false gospel. As do a great many popular books, such as The Shack. In all honesty we have little business criticizing the Watchtower. When evangelicism itself is so corrupt, Written by Robert Skinner